Hey everybody, welcome back to Never Stop Building. My name is Jason and today we are going to be finally finishing up this timber frame pergola build and install. Be sure to check out the previous four videos in the series and if you'd like to follow along, there are plans on Patreon, so check that out. These four main pergola beams were extremely heavy and hard to move, so we adapted a man lift to be a crane. Uh, that is probably not recommended or approved but uh, it is affordable and so you saw you can see I, I basically attached a uh, sling to the bottom of the man lift with a hook and it was a crane at that point and these things don't weigh a whole lot you know I think the capacity of this man lift is a thousand pounds or so and these probably only weigh a couple hundred we lowered the beams down onto some sawhorses and then used the timber cart to snake them back into where this is going to get installed behind the house. All right, so the first thing we were going to do is assemble the gate. And we were going to assemble the whole gate on sawhorses and then crane it into position so that we could ensure all the joinery was tight and then make adjustments on the ground versus sort of putting pieces up in the air. You can see on down on the left there, there's the two foundation stones from the first video and the two bolt, uh, the two large uh, threaded rods that the whole assembly is going to sink down onto. You can see why we wrapped everything with paper, because we're constantly handling these pieces, and since they're all hand-planed, your fingerprints will immediately show, and they'll, they won't disappear, and it's a pain to clean them off. So we kept everything wrapped except where we were working on joinery. First, we position the two large posts on sawhorses and get them lined up and then slide those in on that through tenon cross brace. Then we use some ratchet straps to pull the posts inward to seat the cross brace and install the pegs that uh, locked that into place on the frame. We rotated this whole frame because of how it was going to end up going up into the air and then we could bring in the large upper beam the gate beam I suppose you could say and then that was gonna get driven down onto the tenons on the top of each post you can see here that all the copper that I had fit to the top of this I've set aside and those were gonna get finally installed after that everything was put together so that it didn't get in the way while we were lifting it had to use the large rubber hammer the kakea to drive everything down and get it get it seated in there correctly and then I could drive in the pegs for that and now we had a complete frame the two posts the top beam and the cross brace now this thing was ready to lift onto the foundation stones you can see now that both of those foundation stones have been positioned on their piers and I ground off the extra of the threaded rod and then threaded on the little captive wedge bolt sleeves that are sticking on top of the threaded rod. So once the gate is positioned, then we'll drive in an expanding bolt through the side of these little pockets we made in the posts, and that will cinch the posts down to the tops of the stones. You can see that the stones are held off uh, with some spacers from the the piers. I wanted to test fit everything before I put uh, an epoxy glue to hold the stones down. We lift the thing up very carefully using some rods to keep the bottoms from scratching against the the patio. You might be able to see on this, but the bottoms of these posts have been charred with a torch. That's so that those are somewhat protected from water wicking up into the bottom. And once I was happy with the test fit and got the stones lined up correctly, then we could finally remove our spacers and set everything down. We had to lift and lower the frame a little bit to make the adjustments on those sleeves that are on the threaded rod. I really wanted to get those just right because that was going to determine how tightly we could pull this frame down to the stones. And once that was just perfect, I put a little bit of a mortar around the bottom of the threaded rod so that once the post sat down, it would kind of seal up that hole up inside the posts. My buddy Adam made some slight adjustments to the crane while we got the uh, expansion bolts lined up and inserted into the holes there. And then we used uh, some bracing to plumb everything and get it correct. 
I think that brace was unnecessary. We just used it to keep everything plumb while we were getting everything else uh, set up. The posts that were scribe fit to the stones sat really tightly against the stones and it was really well supported. I'd say the gate was the easy part because the big beams were both heavy and tricky to maneuver and they also had to be rotated into place. You can see in the back that overhang where they bumped the house up, the end of the beam has to go underneath that, but then it also has to come down on top of the gate for that half lap joint to seat. So we had each one we had to pick up uh, and then rotate it about 90 degrees and then have it slanted a bit because it was basically butted up against the bottom of the house there. And then we could drive down the half lap joint. Hope, you know, trying, we could drive the half lap joint down, really trying to keep that gate plumb. And then if there needed to be any adjustment to the house, we could shim behind that bracket. But we took really, I mean, I really was trying to nail these dimensions because I didn't want to have the bracket sit out from the beam on the house and then it would only, you know, the bolts wouldn't be in shear, they'd be in, they'd be bending. So when I planned this out, I took very accurate measurements and built the whole thing in CAD so that I could ensure that when the whole thing went together, there was really tight tolerances and we could wiggle the beams a tiny bit and get them lined up just so against the house. And then when we bolted everything to the house, it really cinched the whole frame together. The last thing to do before calling it quits for that day was to lift up the copper flashing on the top of the four beams. And we drove a super long timber lock screw that tied the beam that tied the main pergola beams to that large gate beam and then finally tightened all the bolts into the house and then the whole pergola was secured. So the next day it was a bright and sunny morning and I started by removing all that protective paper that we had on the frame before the install because it was no longer needed. And you can see at the bottom of that right post, that little square plug that is sitting out from the post, that was to seal the hole where the expansion bolt was tightened down. So eventually I smoothed that out. So I cut that peg back with a saw and then, then smoothed it out with a plane flush to the post. That way I could come back with a torch and char the bottom. Basically by charring the bottom of the posts, it's kind of like a yakisugi treatment and the charring closes the wood cells and it makes it a little more uh, impervious to water, protects it from uh, the moisture and the snow that'll build up around the bottom of these posts. Next step was to take the copper flashing that goes between the big four beams on the gate beam and reinstall all that. There, I am finally doing the charring treatment to the bottom of the posts. Now it wouldn't be a pergola without a bunch of rafters across it to provide shade. So the, we have to get the first one lined up and that first one is pretty important because it's the, the first one and it needs to look nice and be straight and parallel to the house. So we get that one set in so we can establish our spacing all the way back towards the house. So then it was a matter of just working my way back from the gate towards the house with some spacer blocks I had made, screwing down each one of these pergola rafters. Now, in order to save on some cost of material, we did not get full length rafters. Several of these needed to be joined on top of one of the beams. There's a, so there's a seam that you can't really see. You can't really see it from the second floor, but you certainly can't see it from below. So there's, and that seam is also staggered throughout because as you go back from the gate, the effective length of each rafter gets much longer. So you sort of go from a, you know, like a 12 foot on one side with a four foot on the other side. And eventually that long piece grows to where you have an eight foot and a 12 foot or, or two 12 foots. So you're, con we're constantly jumping around 
staggering those seams so that there's a lot of strength, those rafters are holding all the beams together. Uh, all those all those pergola rafters are screwed through the copper with stainless steel screws. And then there's a bead of silicone under each hole. And then the countersink holes where the screws go into are filled with a plug uh, that's glued back in and then cleaned up on the top. So you can't see where the screws are and the screws are quite sealed so there's a lot of ways to keep water from getting into those screw holes and sort of rotting the posts i you know you don't really want to have to screw through this copper flashing but we put layers of protection to keep this water tight okay so this is a little out of order here i actually did this before most of the pergola rafters were installed but the whole part of the job is starts with this which is building these wood frame boxes that go between the beams up against the house. When we removed the old pergola and the round beams, all this stuff was also kind of rotted and it was different size. And so it made sense to just completely clear uh, the framing and rebuild it. So I built some two by four boxes and then put them up into place between the beams. On top of those boxes, I fit two pieces of the cement board siding that matched what they had on the rest of the house and caulked neatly around all of those seams to the to the large beams and then i put a coat of paint which which looks black here but it's actually i think a much more dark brown and once all the painting was done and masking removed we cleaned it up and that is the finished pergola so unfortunately, I never got a chance to see what it looked like without with the stones redone and that they extended their patio and I think they re-landscaped or something like that. But uh, I thought it looked pretty good regardless. Uh, and it was a pretty fun and challenging project to do this large timber frame uh, and integrate it with the house. That whole part took a lot longer than I had planned for all the little detail work at the very end. But it turned out great, and the client was happy. Now they have some shade and a nice gate to their hot tub. So thanks for watching this whole series. If you have any questions about the pergola, please put them in the comments. And thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.